Well, good evening and welcome to the final event in our Personalizing History series, Telling the Story That They Want to Hear. We're so glad you could join us this evening. I'm Dori Gottschalk Fielding from the Seymour Library's History Discovery Center, and we have as our special guest tonight, Angela Walton Raji. Our Personalizing History series is made possible through a humanities grant for libraries. American Rescue Plan Humanities Grants for Libraries is an initiative of the American Library Association made possible with funding from the National Endowment for the Humanities through the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021. We are so pleased to have Angela Walton Raji with us tonight. Ms. Walton Raji, a native of Fort Smith, Arkansas, is known nationally for her genealogical and historical research and work. Among her specialties are Oklahoma Native American records, Arkansas Black history, and Civil War history on the Western frontier. Her website, Arkansas Freedmen, documents the historical community of Fort Smith and the history of the freedmen of the five tribes in nearby Eastern Oklahoma. She also documents black union soldiers and woman workers, both black and white in the Civil War. In addition to research, Ms. Walton Raji is also a writer and author, storyteller and teacher. She has served as the coordinator of a writer's track at the Midwest African American Genealogy Institute, and has also become known for sharing her stories and experiences from her genealogical work. Ms. Walton Raji's book, Black Indian Genealogy Research, was the first book of its kind, focusing on the unique record set reflecting freedmen found within the Dawes records from Eastern Oklahoma. Her latest work, Freedmen of the Frontier, presents family profiles from Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole freedmen. Ms. Walton Raji has presented at numerous conferences nationwide, including Roots Tech, the largest genealogical event in the world, and Southern California Genealogical Jamboree. She's been a featured speaker at the Smithsonian Institution, and she was the only genealogist in the nation to present regular genealogy lectures at the National Museum of the American Indian. In the 1990s, Ms. Walton Raji was a founding member of AfroGenius.com and for 10 years has hosted the African Roots podcast. She holds a bachelor's degree in Spanish from St. Louis University and a master's of education from Antioch University and currently resides in Maryland. And Angela, I will now turn the presentation over to you. Wow, thank you so much. I wanna thank all of you for um, joining this particular session. And I wanna talk about telling the story, but not just telling any story, telling the story that hopefully your friends, your family, your community will want to hear. And we're going to look at different methods of presenting the story of the family and of the community. Because many times, many people are not always aware what story to tell. Now, of course, we talk about the family narrative, which is a presentation where you take a cluster of individuals, obviously a family, who share a common ancestor. But hopefully, it's not going to be just a list of names. It's going to consist of facts that you can share, facts that you have found through your own research. And it can take all kinds of forms. It can take the form of fiction or a memoir or a biography. Maybe there's an ancestor who stands out in your research or even a basic community history. Now, many genealogists think about writing a book as the genealogy journey begins. And I don't know if some of you have had this experience, but I have. I've been at the National Archives or at the State Archives. I'm doing some research and maybe I'm sitting not too far away from someone else doing research and they find their ancestor for the first time. Oh my God, you hear them gasp or you might hear them actually let out a little, yay. <laughs> you may hear a lot of enthusiasm. And then you might hear, oh my God, this is, this is enough for a book. And people get all excited and they're, I'm going to write a book about what I've researched. 
And, uh, and so many people, and hopefully you're among them, who think about writing something as that process begins. Have you been thinking about writing? Have you been giving some sort of thought to it? Now, of course, many people are urged to put down whatever they find. And a lot of other people who are not quite sure, well, how do I do that? What is it? I, what, should I just, just list everybody? How can I make it interesting? Well, I pose for you some questions. And just think about yourself and answer these questions yourself for yourself. What have you found? And not just, well, I found census records. I found death certificates. I'm not asking what in terms of what the actual records are called. What's the content of the records? Oh, I found out that my great-grandfather was a barber in 1918. I didn't know that. So what have you found? What's a fact that you did not know? Also, incorporate what it is that you like. And I'm going to talk about that in, in, shortly. And also, what's your goal? Is your goal simply to create a nice looking family tree or a family reunion? Well, that's not telling a story. Basically, you're presenting something that people can look at, but they're not necessarily going to walk away with increased knowledge about themselves or about their history. So ask yourself, what is your goal? Now, Historical novels are wonderful. So do you like to read historical novels? Have you found enough data from your own research that might inspire you to write the family story in a novel format? Do you like memoir? Do you like to read how other people found something that they are anxious to share? Or do you want to read about a community of individuals? So that's why I ask the question, what do you like? What do you like? What do you like to read yourself? Because what you like to read can be a guide to tell you, oh, maybe I should write something similar. So what do you like to read the most? But also, what would you like to see written? When you look at your own personal research, well, if you had unlimited time and a wonderful, willing audience, what would you like to see them read that you've written about your findings? Because this is where a certain amount of self-reflection, look at yourself and analyze those things that really appeal to you the most. You know, find that quiet place and just think, what is it I like? Can I really turn this into something? And you might be surprised that you can. Now, if you had a willing listener, what story would you want to tell? Do you want to share? And in fact, you may have already started answering these questions. When you find a record that you have uh, been looking for and you're really excited, oh my gosh, I just found out great grandma's maiden name. And you call up cousin, uh, your favorite cousin and tell them about it. They might ask you a question, how did you find it? Well, the first time I found them on the census, she was already married. So you start to go into detail. Well, then you're already telling how you found it. And then I noticed in that census that it was her second marriage. So I had to find, wow, how can I find what her first name was before she entered that first marriage? So you start to talk about the records that you had to look into and then the deductions that you made. You'd be surprised. That person's really listening intensely at what you're saying. Would you want to tell the family's story? Maybe you gather a lot of information. Well, guess what? Our family is now out in Arizona. We started out. I heard we were from Arkansas. But when I found the family in Arkansas, guess what? They were all from Tennessee. So do you want to tell that family's story on how that family that ended up in Arizona had humble roots in Tennessee? Is there a story that solved a mystery? Maybe there's someone that you always heard of, but you never knew whatever happened to them, or maybe you never even knew their name. Was that a mystery that you've heard other people ask? 
Have you been researching multiple families, not just your own, but multiple people who come from the same community? Perhaps if that is the case, then maybe you want to write a history of that community. Or maybe there's an unusual person in the family who just has a really unique story and you want to tell that. I have a, such a story. I remember at a family reunion years ago, someone mentioned that we all had an ancestor. Yeah, he shot somebody and ran away to Texas. Whoa, well, that sounds kind of interesting. What was his story? Maybe you want to find out a little bit about that particular person. And the personal narrative. You as a researcher, you have a journey that you've been undertaking. And sometimes your journey is the story that other people want to hear. So answer this question. How has your research affected your life? In other words, do you find yourself thinking about this all the time? Do you find yourself telling sometimes members of the family, but you can tell, oh, they're not always that interested and it frustrates you a little bit. Have you found yourself in places you never expected to go? Now, we all know about Alex Haley and many people get excited. Oh my God, I'm going to write a book. Well, most of us are not going to write the sequel to Roots. But what was Roots actually? It was a story that he started with a story that had been passed down in his family through multiple generations. He had heard about it and he went to a favorite aunt and she repeated a story she had heard when she was a child from her elders. He told a story that had been passed down. Do you have such a story? Perhaps in your family. Dorothy Sproul Redford wrote one of my favorite books, Somerset Homecoming. She told about her own personal journey to find her family's history. She was inspired, in fact, by Roots. And in fact, by the end of the book, you realize that she had done something so incredible. She had traced her family to Somerset Plantation. But she talked about her journey to find it and how one day pulling over on a highway, it's hot. She got out to get a soda to drink at a small gas station. And she saw those little flyers and it said, visit Somerset Plantation, the home of Thomas Collins. She went, Collins, wait a minute, that's one of the names. Oh my God, this is the home of Collins, the slaveholder. She set out on a brand new journey. And this book talks about that journey. Shirley Taylor Hazlip, fascinating book. If you've not read Sweet of the Juice, she decided to explore a family mystery. And in her particular case, her mother came from a family of several siblings. But once her mother became a young adult, both parents had died when the children were still young and the children were parceled out to different relatives. But over the years, she started seeing them less and less. And by the time she was a young woman and had married herself and her own children, all of her siblings were missing from her life. But she never knew what happened to any of them. Shirley Taylor Hazlip used not just genealogy, but a little bit of, of, of good detective work to find out what had happened to the siblings of her mother. Fascinating story. So I'll ask you in a different way. Has your research taken you sometimes or possibly to an unexpected place? Have you been able to solve a family mystery? Where did somebody go? Where did many people go? Have you found yourself teaching something that was previously unknown by people in a particular community? All of these can lead you down a path that might allow you to tell a fascinating story. And it might take you to a point that you can write something that others want to read. And there are multiple formats of books. You can write the novel, the fiction, or you can write a local history or a biography of a person. Memoir, a favorite of mine, you can write a summary of your own genealogy journey, of your own genealogy journey. And I enjoy 
hearing other researchers talk about their process, their journey to explore their own family history. Or you may, the teacher and you may come out. We want to write a guide for other researchers to follow. There are multiple possibilities for you. Now, whatever you decide to do, there are three things to consider. You want to consider your audience. You want to consider the content and also the frequency of what you're about to write. Now, when you talk about the audience, the audience could be your family. And you might want to do something such as what Melvin Collier has done. He has documented a lot about his family from South Carolina and their South Carolina to Mississippi origins, but he's turned them into a book for his family. But being an excellent writer, many people who have no ties to his family find his writing to be very, very entertaining. But in his case, his audience was his family. But sometimes you find that there's a need for just the community to explore its own history. And you may want to in, involve yourself in an undertaking to document the county or the town or the little neighborhood of the settlement where people lived. This is particularly found in heritage books. Heritage books, you'll see there are multiple contributors, multiple families are re reflected. One needs to have a good editor who oversees that entire process. And maybe that's a task that you may want to do. Instead, it's another option for you. And of course, there's the greater public. You're writing something, it's a guidebook for anybody. You're just gonna give some tips and share things that you have learned in terms of writing what you think will help people from multiple backgrounds. And these are often, again, methods of you being able to put something in writing based on what you have been experiencing. So always think about your audience. Is it family? Is it the local community? Is it the greater public? There's also, if you're, let's zoom in on family. If you are thinking about writing a book about the family, you can zoom in and write just about that. Maybe that one cluster from which you have the strongest identity. And maybe it has a unique background. And this is one in which your target, target audience is family. So you give them all kinds of pieces of information. But you're not just going to give a list of names. You want to move beyond that. You want some fascinating facts that people can pick up, read, enjoy, and learn about the family. Facts that were previously unknown. That might really be something that might answer questions for others. Or you may want to do a family newsletter. Some people just share something that they find frequently and they put it in newspaper format, a uh, newsletter format rather, and maybe it's published quarterly or maybe it's published twice a year, maybe once a year. There are all kinds of options that are out there. And of course, you may want to write it as historical fiction. Many of you have possibly heard the story of Jubilee by Margaret Walker. She had studied many things about our own family history and turned that story into an incredible, incredible narrative. And again, these are things that you can do. These are just a few of the different methods in which you can put the family's story in print. Again, I talked about the local community. And of course, you may want to think of maybe you just developed some amazing techniques that you want to share with others in terms of how to document things, a tool book, a tool kit, or a, a guidebook. There are many options for you. And of course, one can't, I'll go back to the historical novel. You cannot escape what makes a very good read. 
and I always enjoy historical novels, Cane River. Lolita Tatami did an incredible job in terms of not just showing facts about her family, but she documented it in terms of bringing in the entire community around the Cane River communities in Louisiana. Amazing story. I also mentioned uh, the research journey and the unique family story or the local history. But let's talk about the content. Do you like to talk about your experiences? Have you, sometimes I won't even say an ancestor, but I, I asked the question, have you found an ancestor whose life stories caught your attention? I found a man, I only looked at him closely because he had an odd name. His name was Sugar T. George. This is a man in Oklahoma. And I found that his name, it was so unusual. It's like, how did this guy go through life uh, with the name Sugar T. George? I found out the, the T stood for tooth, Sugar Tooth George. Whoa, now that is unique. But as I looked into Sugar T. George's life, I found out he came from the Muscogee Creek Nation. He served, in the, and this man had been born enslaved. He served in both ruling houses of the Muscogee Nation, the House of Warriors and the, and the House of Kings. He was town king, comparable to a mayor of North Fork, colored town in what is now Oklahoma. Amazing man. He was also a Civil War veteran. He was also an attorney. And in many of the depositions before Oklahoma statehood, when people were asked who they were when they were trying to apply for land allotments, well, where did you go after the war? Well, we camped out at Sugar George's property and he allowed us to stay there until we got settled and got on our feet and moved to Muscovia or moved to Fort Gibson or wherever their, their home ended up being. Sugar T. George, his name caught my attention. But then as I looked at his life, he is one of my favorite people, and he is not a relative. He's not an ancestor, but I like Super George. Are you looking at a cluster of families that are interconnected? Absolutely amazing stories. And sometimes to find them, <laughs> I suggest that, that you consider exploring those communities that you look at all the time. Let's say you have folks in Shelby County, Tennessee, just making up a, a, just a com random community or it can be Auburn, New York, wherever your, your family members come from. Play with that community. Were your ancestors enslaved? Were they free people of color? Do you have a mixed background in your family's history? Have you played around with the database of that community? You can definitely do that with ancestry, who were all of the people of color in your particular county in 1870? Have you played with it in terms of just asking the question and then doing a search? Are there any people in that same county who were born in Africa or whose parents were born in Africa? You know, you can play with Ancestry's database and just put in Africa as place of birth. You don't have to put in a name and see what shows up. You might find something very interesting and find something that you want to pursue and write about it. It could be interesting. Do you have information that you want others to also want? That you want them to, to want to hear what you're talking about? Possibly, if you answer any of these questions, yes. You have a story. And to embrace the fact that you do have a story to tell. You have a story to tell if you want to talk about what you have found or what you want to share is how you found it or you want to talk about a group of people in the ancestry community or possibly maybe there's a community, a unique community of people that the local history has never talked about but you see that they're there and there are quite a few details about them that you've been able to find. If so, you already have a story. Now, as I said, of course, there are the books that are out there. 
And many of us think, yeah, wouldn't it be wonderful to have the next sequel to Roots? But again, look at yourself to find out what direction to take that. But you may not want to write a book, but you still have a lot of things to say. Consider creating a blog. Again, think about your audience. Is your blog for yourself? Is your blog for your family? And many people do have a blog for their family, just about their own. And some have a blog that might be useful for others. There are all kinds of blogs. That's a, a platform for you to consider as well. You also may want to look at the possibility of writing articles. There are publications. There are the magazines, Family Tree Magazine, Internet Genealogy, Your Genealogy. Or there are the, the society quarterlies or the society annual journal. There, there are numerous opportunities and platforms and places where you can share what you have found and you're encouraged to do so. Let's see here. Now, do you like to talk? If you like to talk, why not consider becoming a broadcaster, you know, or a podcaster? Bernice Bennett, who's also a writer and a blogger and a researcher, she had for many years her own blog on Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio is a platform that you get, you can have a free account. Of course, you're limited to maybe 30 minutes, but maybe that's all you want your blog to be, your podcast to be. The genealogy guys have been doing podcasts for well over a decade. Genealogy Gems, Lisa Louise Cook, she has all kinds of tips and how to's. And oh my gosh, if you've ever thought of undertaking maybe a project to map your ancestors' journey, she has wonderful podcasts and videos on her blog on how to create a mapping project. And the African Roots podcast, the podcast that I operated for 10 years. And again, there are numerous opportunities for you to get out there and to share what you have been doing. So just find yourself, embrace yourself, and become a member of the community of storytellers. Because if you have something to say, you are a storyteller. And this is something important. So find yourself among the community of storytellers. Now, I also ask people, and again, self-reflection again, what do you enjoy the most? Do you like reading? Do you like listening? Do you like watching? Do you like journaling, that physical act of putting pen to paper or hand to keyboard? What do you enjoy the most? Because whichever one that you enjoy the most, it should begin to give you a clue. Hmm, I think I can do this as well. And think about it. So, you know, you may want to write the memoir. Summer's at Homecoming. I try and reread it or at least look at it once every year. This is a book that not only do you know, you learn things about the life of Dorothy School Redford, but you also follow her on her research journey. And it's such a, a delightful read. Another memoir, Bernice Bennett, the one who hosted the blog radio show. She started out with just, I won't even say a tip, it was kind of a hint from her grandmother. When her grandmother talked about her own grandfather and would call him Papa and say, you know, Papa, Papa had a lot of land. And Bernice was curious, well, what happened to the land? There was no answer. She said about the process of finding what happened to that land. I've already mentioned historical fiction, Jubilee, Margaret Walker, but she based the family's story with characters in the community and she followed her family, Barry, the main character, through a time period. 
and again, an incredible, incredible story, fiction, historical fiction, and particularly the mystery. What happened to Mama's family? Shirley Taylor Hayslip set out to find out. What happened to all her siblings? All of them have disappeared. She's never seen them in her adult years. And she went through the process of sharing with the reader how she found out what happened to them. And she went sibling by sibling, some of whom had died. And the fact was that in the case of her mother, a pretty medium brown skinned lady, she was darker than the rest of the siblings. The others were fairer in complexion and they began to pass as white and they walked away from their black identity. And she talks about that, but she uses genealogy going back to the parents and who they were and then following them through just the detective work to find out what happened. So I also encourage you to find your voice, not just through the act of self-reflection, but look at yourself, interact with the genealogy community, find out who else is writing and then follow others who also write. It's very important that you connect and become a part of a community of other writers. As I said, self-reflection. If there's anything unique about your community that grabs your interest, maybe you don't even talk about it to anyone, or maybe you do, maybe you have a good genie buddy and you, and you talk about that or you ask a question, then hmm, give some thought to that. Maybe that's the story you want to write. Or has a local cemetery caught your interest? Are there some headstones? Wow, I'm noticing all these headstones and they all have a similar kind of emblem. I wonder what that is. Or have you ever visited a cemetery and you see some headstones that look like trees or pieces of logs? Perhaps they're part of American Woodman, which was the African-American version of the woodman of the world that you see in larger cemeteries? Have you discovered a special or unique organization that was a part of your community historically? Perhaps that's something you want to write about. Or has one particular ancestor just become an obsession? And you'll know what I mean about maybe one person just is always on your mind. You're probably a storyteller. You just have to start telling the story. So find the answers. When you find the answers, you're going to find your content. So as I said, well, what do you enjoy? Sports? Crafts? Cooking? Teaching? Art? I the list could go on and on. But did that interest come maybe from an elder or an ancestor who you've discovered who did the same thing? This is why you want to find out those details about their lives. It's so important. So ask elders questions. If you are fortunate enough to still have elders, and remember, ask them about the same interests that you, that you share. Who was it that was a teacher in the family? If the family came from a farming community, well, what were the crops? What did they grow? Find out, did they come from the Carolinas where tobacco was the crop? What's unique about growing tobacco? How is growing tobacco different from growing cotton or corn or indigo? There's something unique with each of those communities. Was someone a teacher? Where did they teach? Do you enjoy crafts? Was there someone else who was a crafter? Who was the master quilter in the family? Or who was the ancestor who was always the hunter? This person, we always had fresh wild game because Uncle Jack was always out hunting, was always coming back, something you need. And then, of course, the other question is, why did you start your research journey? To find the answers maybe to some of these questions, or maybe you have another pressing question, which could be, the catalyst to get you started. Why? And sometimes the answer to this one question 
can become the basic frame from which the story that you want to write can emerge. One thing, there are two characteristics of a good writer. A good writer is one who reads and a good writer is one who writes. Both are important. You'll get your inspiration as a reader from what others have written. And if you ever look at, if you have a favorite writer and you're lucky to look at an interview with perhaps a writer who you admire, one of the things you will learn is that they read a lot. And of course, the physical act of writing, pen to paper or hand, finger to keyboard, whatever the output is, you want to do both. If you haven't started already, start to journal. There are plenty of blank books that you can get at any place, at almost any, even supermarkets sell blank books. Just go down the one little miscellaneous aisle and you'll see some blank journals. Start to write and start to record your own. And I'll ask you a question. Do you ever wish that your ancestor had left diaries or journals for you to find? And if you ever wish that that had happened, why aren't you doing that for the following generations to find centuries from now? Oh, my God. Here is our great, great, great uncle who left his journal. Our great, 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 great aunt. Our great, great grandma. Look at these journals that she left. Make this a part of your life's habit now. But start to read. Start to read genealogy journals. Start to, uh, and of course, there are different types of publications I've already mentioned. Start to look at blogs. There are hundreds of genealogy blogs that are out there. And there are those books that emerge from genealogy projects that are out there as well. Let me give you five book types or five samples of books. The Washingtons of Westington. This is a community book. John Baker learned of his family when he was, what, in middle school? And in fact, his journey began once he was doing some homework, had a social studies textbook spread out. He was doing his homework, and one of the relatives passed by, saw him doing some work. He said, what? what? What's my grandfather doing in your, in your book? He was like, what? That particular book in his textbook, which was a, uh, um, a book about the local history, he learned that one of those individuals, the man standing second from the right, was his ancestor. And this elder in the family recognized him. That's, that's my grandma. What, what's he doing there? That started him on a journey, and he was still in middle school. But as an adult, he became really more interested, learned that they came from Westington Plantation in Rutherford County, Tennessee. And he began to study that community. And he found out it was a community of over 400 slaves who had never sold away. So he was able to research every single family that lived on Westington Plantation. Of course, he ended up with a tremendous best-selling book. And it's something that many people can consider. If you're looking at a community, only a few were related to him, but others were not, <clears throat> but they still had Westington in common. I mentioned Bernice Bennett's book where she documents the, the story of trying to find out what happened to her ancestors. land. She decided to research the story of that land she decided to trace their steps and she documents how the land was obtained and how it was later lost. Wonderful story. It's a totally different story, one drop. Bliss Broyard grew up in Connecticut, learned that her father had a secret of his own identity that he was keeping from her. The secret was simple. He was of African descent from Louisiana. She had not grown up knowing that she had African descent in her family. But once she learned it, she set upon a journey 
to find the history of her father's family. And she goes into full detail with that. That is the story that she had to tell. Kathleen Marshall went on an intensive search to find out just some things about her own family's diverse ancestry. Certainly her family's very mixed family. And all she knew is that on this particular family, Arthur Williams, she had just heard he was born a slave in Maryland in the 1830s. But she wanted to know more about him. Not only who were his parents, but who was the person who had enslaved him? Where was his home? What was his life like 150 years or so earlier? And she talks about that in terms of the research journey of finding Otho Williams. Quilt of Souls. Phyllis Elmore was sent to live with her grandmother at the age of four. Her grandmother was a master quilter. And she quilted all the time. Many times she would get remnants of fabrics from different people in the community. They had discarded clothing to give, give her remnants. But as she was quilting, she began to tell Phyllis stories about the people that she had known. Oh, this was Cora's favorite, favorite paper. Let me tell you about Cora. And she began to let these stories flow in terms of the stories. It's also a community story, a community of people who were living in, in certainly early 20th century or mid 20th century South and the different things that affected these families and these souls whose lives she was able to tell as she stitched together her quilts. Amazing story. But there are also some blogs that are wonderful blogs. Find Your Folks, Drusilla Pear, Newport News, Virginia. She shares parts of her genealogy journey for over 10 years. Some of it is reflecting strictly her genealogical research, but some of it's reflecting local history where she lives in Newport News, Virginia. Her family came out of North Carolina, but settled in later years in, in Virginia. And a lot of her research reflects that as well. 52 ancestors in 52 weeks. This is an interesting process. And I'm gonna come back to this in just a little bit and talk about this 52 week process. But this is a platform started by a genealogy blogger. Her name is Amy Johnson Crow. And she encourages people, do something with your genealogy, have some fun. She offers blogging memes for people on a weekly basis to assist people to pull out some stories about whatever you've been researching all this time. And a lot of people have followed her prompts and some books have emerged from her initiative. Her initiative is called 52 Ancestors in 52 Weeks. I'm going to come back to that in a second. The legal genealogist, Judy Russell, some of you may know her name. She's a lawyer by profession. She's also a genealogist. And she's taken her interest, her own passion for law, but her passion for history, and she's combined them into a blog where she teaches people by inserting the laws that pertain to a particular community or a particular group of people. She teaches a class at the Midwestern African American Genealogy Institute, which we refer to as Maggie. She teaches a class called Slavery and the Law. Incredible, incredible researcher. And she has paired her love of law and her love of history and created her own platform. Betty's List. Terry Ligon discovered that one of his ancestors led a major class action lawsuit in Oklahoma at the turn of the 20th century. These were people who had been enslaved by Chickasaw, Chickasaw uh, native people, the Chickasaw community, and they had been enslaved here. And before Oklahoma statehood and lands were being allotted, they wanted to be put on the blood roll because many of these individuals who were freed people, freedmen, had native fathers. But because their mothers were of African ancestry, they put them on the freedmen roll. Although they were still part of that same community, but the difference meant 
that they would get 40 acres as opposed to 320 acres. Many who knew their fathers were native said, well, wait a minute, we know our fathers and we do have the same blood that others have. And she led a class action lawsuit of almost 2000 people who were seeking to be transferred to the blood wall. He has a blog devoted to her quest. Again, something unique, this one ancestor who has grabbed him and he has a blog devoted to her story. Many of you already know, I've already mentioned Melvin Collier. It's absolutely amazing the research that, is done, that he has done. Three books have emerged from his own research, different lines, different branches of his own ancestry. But he poses questions and then presents answers to what he has found. And he also shares the methods that he used to solve those problems. So for you, write your own story or stories, a series of stories perhaps, What's the piece that you would like to read? Write that. Ask a question and then go find the answer. What happened to Mama's siblings? Go find the answer. Be open to go where you have never gone before. You've probably never had an interest in civil war. And now you're finding yourself going to a civil war battle reenactment. Be open to that. And look at what's hidden in plain sight. Revisit some of those cemeteries. Take a look at some of the buildings in the ancestral community. What do you see? Do you see any in unique inscriptions? Look at the cornerstones of the old churches. When were they established and by whom? Think of who has inspired you and why they have inspired you. So I urge you, if you've not written at all, I encourage you to take on a blogging challenge. Remember, I mentioned 52 ancestors in 52 weeks. Well, I was fascinated by that, but I looked at my own research and I realized, well, I don't know if I have 52 people that are that interesting to write about, but I research a lot of families, especially from Oklahoma and the freedmen that come out of five different tribes. I took on a project on my blog to document 52 families in 52 weeks. I didn't write about 52 different people. I profiled 52 families who were freedmen from five tribes, Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek and Seminole nations. By the year's end, I had 52 different families that I documented over those previous 52 weeks. That was in 2017. In 2018, I began editing what I had written over that year. And by 2019, my book, volume one of that project was published, Freedmen of the Frontier. In that particular volume, volume one, I documented Cherokee, Choctaw, and Chickasaw Freedmen families. And in 2020, volume two was published selected Creek and Seminole Freedman families. I encourage you, and if you just do a simple Google search, 52 families in 52 weeks, you'll, you'll come up on your blog. But this might be a platform that might lead you to writing something that you hadn't considered. Maybe you've visited 52 places and that you want to write about them. If it's not 52, as I said, I didn't have 52 ancestors that I could write something interesting enough about. But I could take 52 families and write about them. So again, self-reflect. What's unique about your own research that you'd like to be able to share or to tell? There are some videos that can assist you. And um, anyway, you may want to do that. There's uh, Take a look at some of them. And some are fairly recent in the last two or three years. Uh, one, of course, is stop writing boring genealogies. And of course, I do recommend that. How to write a compelling story about your ancestor. But I always want to make it plural, ancestors. 
because it might be more than one. And keep it simple, how to write a family history book. But I also say step outside the box. It doesn't have to be a family history. It might be something else. And think of the different methods and platforms that are out there for you to undertake. There are some books, which I shared with you earlier, How to Write Compelling Stories from Family History by Annette Kendler, Guide to Genealogical Writing, Penelope Stratton and Henry Hogg, and Chris Spisak, The Family Story Workbook. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more that you can do. Be creative and just, as I said, self-reflect. Think about yourself. Think about your journey. Think about your family history. Where are we from? Is there anything unique about the community or unique about a tiny aspect of it that a lot of people talk about? Identify your passion. You can do this and write your story. And hopefully by doing so, you will be able to write the story that they want to read. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time. I'm here to answer any questions that you might have, uh, but thank you. And um, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. And I'll turn it back to you, Dory. Okay. Um... Just checking to see if we did have any questions from anyone. I'm not seeing any hands up at the moment. Okay. Um, well, thank you so much, Angela. You shared so many wonderful um, resources with us tonight. So many great starting points and insights on, on how to go about all this. And we really, we really appreciate this. Oh, it's been my pleasure. And by the way, I do see that there is another writer in the audience. I see um that uh Renata uh is also a writer she's a very active member of the genealogy community and um she has a wonderful blog um called into the light you may want to follow her blog do a google search and find it excellent writer and fabulous presenter and well, thank you Oh, is that Dr. Mary Clark who's in the room? Another woman whose story you're going to be able to read soon in a book on homesteaders about to come out in September. And um, uh, there's a book on, called Black Homesteaders of the South. And I know Dr. Mary Clark is going to have an entry in that book. So I'm glad to see some fellow writers that are here. So this is wonderful. That's great. That's great. And, uh, oh, I see another friend. Oh, my goodness. I'm seeing a few, a few OGs, as the young people will say. Um, glad to see some people here whose names I'm recognizing. I'm recognizing uh, Mr. Washington from Virginia. And, uh, oh, this is really wonderful. This is really great. And thank you all. I've enjoyed it. And I hope that we'll see some people start to emerge. Try that blocking me, 52 ancestors, because it doesn't have to be ancestors. It can be families. It can be places. It can be so many things. Um, oh, my gosh. So just join the community of storytellers. There's such a wonderful opportunity out there. And we need more books. Um, some of you are doing some amazing research. And I want to hear more about it. So anyway, thank you all. Somebody says they've gotten a push forward. Okay, I like that. Oh, that means we're going to be seeing some books. Thank you so much. Dory, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you in the Seymour Library. Thank well. you. We, we appreciate your time being here tonight. And everyone, please keep in mind that the Seymour Library's History Discovery Center is here to help you with your family history research, um, both with our online uh, resources as well as on-site research assistants and our databases. And before you log off, if you could take a, a moment, please, to answer the participant survey that you'll see on your screen. We would greatly appreciate that. And thank you again, Angela. And thank you to everyone for being here. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. I enjoyed it.